The next session will be the keynote speech connecting Thailand to new investment frontiers. Contribution of Monetary and Financial Markets by Dr. Prasan Trayarat Warakun, Bank of Thailand, the Governor. And the question and answer session will be run by Dr. Sapuwit Sai Chia from Patala Securities Public Company Limited. Dr. Prasan has been appointed to be the 22nd Governor of Bank of Thailand since October 2010. Prior to this, Dr. Prasan worked in the top positions of a number of the organizations both from private and public companies, including the Securities Exchange Commission of Thailand and Kasikon Bank Public Company Limited. In September 2011, during the IMF and World Bank annual meetings, he was awarded as the Central Bank Governor of the Year for Asia 2011 Award from Emerging Markets Magazine, recognizing his policy track record and his strong commitment to maintain economic stability. With his extensive experiences in banking and financial markets fields, together with his current role as the central bank governor. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Prasan Trayarat Warakun on stage to give the keynote speech. Please, Dr. Prasan, Kap. Good morning, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Before I thank the host for inviting me, I would like to thank the MC for the very uh, gracious introduction. Um, uh, thanks to the Stock Exchange of Thailand, uh, Pachara, uh, Bank of America, and Merrill Lynch uh, for the invitation to address this uh, distinguished audience on the very topical issue of uh, connecting Thailand to the new investment frontiers. I also would like to extend a very warm welcome to our foreign guest and to thank you for your continued interest in Thailand and the region. Today, um, I would like to discuss the roles of monetary and uh, financial policies in supporting the Thai economies as we prepare ourselves for the new investment frontiers. Uh, as you know, much has happened recently, uh, with events taking a complete 180 degrees turn from the beginning of the year. It uh, did not seem long ago when the emerging market economies were the fascination and destination of choice for international investors. But since May, global market sentiments have turned with the expectation of a scale back of Fed asset purchases. Uh, this coincided with the concern over regional slowdown, initially starting with China, but lately moving to other South and Southeast Asian economies since the unprecedented uh, sell-off in May, there have been some recent corrections to the initial re overreactions. Nevertheless, capital movements and asset prices continue to be volatile and pose headwinds to growth and financial stability. The summer period provided a brief respite and provided investors with more time to be selective, not treating all the EMEs as one single asset class. Economic fundamentals became a primary consideration for assessing in which market to remain invested. We trust that Thailand will continue to receive the attention of foreign investors because of our sound fundamentals and attractive prospects. This, notwithstanding the current soft patches as the economy consolidates and work on its long-term competitiveness agenda, the Deputy Prime Minister has uh, given some uh, explanation to the latest figures. 
Now, not to say that we don't have our own problems. Long before the subprime and the eurozone crisis, Thailand had their own economic crisis of 1997. We experienced a setback that took us more than half a decade to recover. Since then, we learned the virtue of moderation and prudence. Firms had to deleverage. Banks recapitalized. Regulatory standards, governance reforms, and bank lending practices have improved markedly. The government's fiscal framework was also strengthened following the fiscalization of the cost of financial sector restructuring. Years of hard work and reform efforts paid off and laid the foundation for a more diversified and competitive economy. The availability of policy space, both in the fiscal, monetary, and financial policies, helped ensure a much needed domestic source of growth when global trade collapsed in 2008. Timely government stimulus helped shore up domestic demand. And an accommodative monetary policy and a strong and well-capitalized banking system provided a favorable environment whereby firms and households could continue to finance the consumption and expansion to support the domestic demand. The Thai economy was able to navigate through short-term sale-offs and the sharp reversal of capital flows. The recent turbulence, in fact, provided a reality check on the importance of policy consistency and the fundamentals of the economy. And I think this is much more important than asking other advanced economies to be mindful of the impacts of their policy on the emerging market economies. Monetary and financial policies in Thailand have strongly relied on prudence and pragmatism. A credible monetary policy framework helped anchor inflation expectation, thereby fostering continued growth and stability. A flexible exchange rate regime also supported the efficient allocation of resources and competitiveness of the economy. A strong external position helped cushion against sharp reversals of capital flows. One can never put a price on the comfort with which a strong international reserve position brings. Imagine if we had to raise domestic interest rates to defend the currency that is weakening because of capital outflows. All of this at a time when the global economy is weak and the domestic economy needs the support of accommodative macroeconomic policies. Financial liberalization and regulatory reform efforts under the financial sector master plan provided opportunity for tides, particularly small-scale firms, to have better access to finance. A competitive banking system and a vibrant capital market also helped strengthen investors' confidence through efficient resource allocation and appropriate pricing of risk. The availability of policy spaces in fiscal, monetary, and financial policies provided a cushion for the economy to withstand shocks, both domestic, such as our own flood, and external from the risk of a global slowdown. You may be reading market commentaries on the rise in household debt and credit growth in Thailand. Let me remind you that those were the very issue raised by the Bank of Thailand. Successive monetary policy committee statements have pinned these as issues of concern to the MPC, even though there were calls for a reduction in policy rates. Our traditional bias towards conservatism and our strong belief in looking beyond short-termism kept 
us steadfast in our mission to be the voice of conscience and moderation. Through these repeated messages, the banking system and the property sectors, through their own revaluation of risk and returns, have put on their own brakes and are now proceeding more cautiously. The economy overall is also benefiting from the slower pace of activities, which, were they to continue, would risk the build-up of imbalances in the property sector or household balance sheet. To enable Thailand to enjoy the benefits from the new investment frontier requires the continued pursuit of sound macroeconomic and financial policies. It also requires improvement on the supply side. That is, the investment in infrastructure, education, and innovation to raise the competitiveness of the economy. This is a forward-looking chapter that is unfolding. There is need for deeper collaboration between the public and the private sectors to position Thailand as an anchor or a hub of the region. Strategies for the private sector to ensure a durable growth strategy can best be summarized in terms of three moves. Move up, move out, and move in. Let me elaborate further. Move up is a reminder of our firms and enterprises to raise their productivity, to support the competitiveness of the Thai economy, and in preparation for the upcoming economic integration. Moving up the value chain will enable us to differentiate our products, enhance its value, and to enable us to command the margins for our trade. Competing through cheap prices is no longer a viable and sustainable model, both for the firms themselves and for the resource-constrained economy. Our labor force is in much need of productivity upgrades through relevant education, training, and apprenticeship. Although these are long-drawn processes, the rewards and returns for the economy is more durable. Increasingly, we are seeing large Thai corporates working in close cooperation with the education bodies in the recruitment and training to ensure the necessary and relevant supply of skills for their businesses. The next strategy is move out beyond the boundaries and the comfort of one's own home market. Thai corporates can no longer wait for the transfer of knowledge and technology through FDI. They need to venture abroad to secure the resources, know-how, franchise value, or distribution channels. Recognizing this, the Bank of Thailand has gradually relaxed capital flows regulation, initially on outward direct investment, and more recently on portfolio investments for accredited investors. We plan to continue to broaden the scopes of investment with freer mobility for Thai residents in investing overseas. The Bank of Thailand is also working closely with the Ministry of Finance and other agencies on appropriate tax incentives to facilitate the setting up of treasury center, to enable large corporate to conduct in-house financial transactions more efficiently and with lower transaction costs. With the opening up of the new investment frontier, this is probably the most exciting time for Thai corporates to invest abroad to secure resources, both raw material and know-how, expanding customer base, acquiring distribution channels, and broadening markets. The last area of move-in aims to create a more attractive business environment for foreigners to turn to Thailand as an important springboard for investment in the new frontier markets. 
Thailand has a geographical location advantage to become an investment hub for the ASEAN economic community, particularly the new frontier markets. To become a magnet for the region, Thailand needs to maintain its ranking in the ease of doing businesses in such areas of rules of law, governance, and strong regulatory frameworks. The Thai capital markets has also worked hard to promote its role as the funding center for new frontier markets. Recently, the government of the Lao PDR successfully issued Thai baht denominated bonds amount to 1.5 billion baht to finance its investment projects. The quota have also been doubled to 3 billion baht for next year. I'm confident that the subsequent sessions in this two-day forum will offer you a clear picture on the opportunities and pro prospects this region has to offer. Why the private sector works hard to move up, move out, and move in. The focus of the public sector is on infrastructure, both physical and intangible, to raise the competitiveness of the economy elevate its workforce capability, and enhance its return on capital. Recognizing the short-lived, though timely, nature of consumption-led stimulus, the government is embarking on a major infrastructure investment in logistics, communication, water management, and transportation, as mentioned in the Deputy Prime Minister's speech. A strong and efficient logistic system will significantly help reduce transportation and logistic costs, which are major impediments to our longer-term growth. These projects will help unlock the bottleneck and raise overall competitiveness as well as crowding private investment. Infrastructural projects will also strengthen Thailand's position as a hub for our Greater Mekong subregion or the GMS neighbors, and is expected to accelerate the integration of these economies as we approach the 2015 ASEAN Economic Community. Projects such as the North South and East West corridors will further facilitate integration as well as efficiency of transportation and logistics in the region. As the Western economies progress in the recovery from the global financial crisis. We in Asia should step up our preparations to avail ourselves of the benefits once the global economy is back on its track. This is a good occasion for our foreign participants to share in the opportunity and prosperity of the region. Foreign investors can participate as co-financing and co-investment partner, for example, through becoming public-private partnership, joint venture, or by investing in infrastructure bonds or primary shares. In the area of banking and finance, the country will shortly be welcoming new foreign participants, both as a strategic partner to an established Thai bank as well as new entrants in the form of subsidiaries. In addition to tackling the infrastructure constraints, the government has articulated an ambitious goal of pushing Thailand towards an innovative economy. The government raised the goal of R&D expenditures as share of GDP from 0.2 to 1% 1 by 2016 and move to establish the IT parks. This is still small in comparison to our neighbors such as Singapore and Korea, but it's a step in the right direction. The challenge, of course, remains in the implementation and execution phase. Given that, given that our long-term growth strategy hinge largely on the infrastructure and human capital investment, which takes time to bear fruit. 
the urgency to start now is all the more important. Postponing such reforms to a future date may risk running up a scenario like Europe, where the economic engine is being put through a major overhaul and restructuring. At the same time, while the plane is still flying through a turbulent storm at 30,000 feet, foreign investors have an important role to play in ensuring Thailand press ahead with these reform efforts. As the voice of reason and conscience, foreign analysts, credit rating agencies, and fund managers have not hesitated to let us know whenever we seem to be slipping in our reform path or policy inconsistency. To conclude, these are exciting times for all of us. In the wake of the great unwinding, as public agencies, the Bank of Thailand can undertake the necessary monetary and financial policies to stabilize the market and attenuate the effects of short-term volatility or market fickleness. But the task for long-term development lies with everyone. All of us have a role to build the road to sustainable growth for the country and the region. I thank the Stock Exchange of Thailand and the two cohorts for this occasion to bring together investors and government agencies to renew our focus on investments and opportunities for the future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Prasad, and please kindly stay on the stage for the next session, which is the Q&A session. Uh, may I invite Dr. Suput Sai Shia from Patala Securities on stage to begin the next session. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you very much again, Dr. Prasan. Thank you very much. Um, if I may, sir, I'd like to ask um, the first question. Um, you said that you um, expect um, Thailand to face short-term headwinds, uh, volatility. As investors, as you say, it overreact to um, the response to scaling back of asset purchases by the Federal Reserve. Uh, we have not only investors here, but also Thai corporates, and they... Uh, probably would like to ask you, um, what should they watch out for in particular? How should they pre prepare themselves uh, in the months ahead? And would the Bank of Thailand provide us with some assurance of comfort for a jittery market? Thank you, sir. Um, now, on this uh, news of uh, possible tapering of the um, uh, quantitative easing, which in fact in our central banking circle we call the unconventional monetary policy, uh, I'd like to start by giving uh, this observation that uh, when the advanced economies, and in this case particularly the U.S., uh, decided to introduce the unconventional monetary policy uh, some five years back, uh, that was, in fact, uh, during the very bad time for their economies and has uh, all kind of consequences uh, around the world. At that time, they have, uh, in effect, uh, injected excessive liquidity into the system, and a lot of them also spill over to, particularly to, to re region, including Thailand. And the result is the uh, significant appreciation of our currency. So at that time, we did, we did not like it. It created lots of problems uh, to the extent that the BAT also appreciated a lot uh, to a certain time particularly the early part of this time, there was speculation in the market uh, whether the uh, Bank of Thailand's governor will be repressed uh, <laughs> if not able to correct the, uh, the strength of the Thai bar. Now, put that in perspective. Now, they, they want to taper. <laughs> they want to, to go back to their normal situation. It means that uh, they sense some signals of recovery in their economy. Why don't we welcome <laughs> that kind of situation? 
um, so that everybody around the world, including us, can come to the normal path, not having to worry too much about the appreciation of our currency, which can distort a number of our economic activities. Now, having said that, I think had the communication on their part been clearer, the timing of the withdrawal or tapering uh, firmer, the investor then can plan the more calculated withdrawal in, in, in investment. That, that perhaps uh, my, my observation. Now, for the private sector, as you mentioned, that among our audience, lots of Thai corporates, this has been uh, our stance uh, communicating with the Thai uh, corporate sectors that uh, they have to watch out. Market sentiment can change, can move very fast. And it's best for them to keep their balance sheets, balance sheets strong. In, in the sense that uh, uh, we certainly not prefer them to take two extreme positions. For, that's, for example, take in uh, lots of foreign borrowings uncover, like a number of corporates in this country faced in 1997. We always warned that if possible, they try to keep their, their position uh, uh, square. Uh, if open position was uh, 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 introduced, uh, not, not too excessive. Uh, if something happened, they can cushion against the, the downside risk. Now, as for investors, um, put this in perspective again. When, when, when you come in for an investor or domestic investor, you buy assets. You, you buy because you see the attractiveness in Thai assets. Well, sometimes with that kind of excessive liquidity, pricing of assets can go uh, excessive too. Put in perspective, this is uh, a repricing of assets, the valuation. But, but don't overlook the fundamentals, the attractiveness that you observe in the beginning. So don't, don't, don't be panicked. Now, uh, part of your question to uh, ask about the commitment of the central bank. Uh, bank of Thailand being central bank, we, we work like a water reservoir, analogy of the, the flood. Uh, we, we work like a reservoir uh, containing some of the excessive flow. Had we allowed this excessive flow to go out into the market without absorbing them, it will create lots of consequences in the asset pricing may create lots of bubbles. Now, by doing that job, we realize fully well that we will, can also be hit severely when bad to strengthen. Like uh, sometimes uh, in certain circles, uh, uh, particularly in the media, say that, oh, why balance sheet or the Bank of Thailand uh, you know, appear so, so negatively. Now, you hold all these uh, foreign assets in, in, in your reserves, but on the right-hand side, liabilities in Thai asset, which uh, costs higher than the return you get from the foreign asset during, the, uh, during that time, and particularly this, also this time, uh, we were hit. But that's the job of the central bank. We have to keep stability rather than to ma maximize profit or keep our uh, balance sheets in the pro profit territory. But now, the situation calls for the use of the cushion. That's why we, uh, we don't think it's an issue at all. Uh, at the moment when there are some, some outflows, uh, we can accommodate it uh, quite easily with the uh, level of cushion we have. And we can ensure you that we, we will not hesitate. If it is necessary for us to contain any uh, excessive movement in the market, I think we have enough uh, cushion to do so. I, I beg to uh, follow up on that point that you raised. Uh, um, the market participants obviously are very interested in uh, those points that you raised in particular. Um, what are the parameters um, that matter to you uh, is what we would like to, to know. Are there thresholds that the Bank of Thailand has in mind, such as employment, credit conditions, limit to uh, bad exchange rate volatility? Are there things you have in mind? that you would like to communicate to us? 
Uh, well, some uh, in the supply side, some on the demand side. Uh, so on the demand side, we can uh, contain and legitimately to do so. But on the supply side, it will be kind of uh, uh, too pretentious to say such an unemployment and so on that we can can and uh, do much much about. But in some, the uh, key parameters that we monitor uh, are embodied in. Uh, the terms we call uh, internal and uh, external uh, stability. Uh, those that deal with uh, internal and, and external stability. Uh, but knowing fully well that, fully well that um, uh, some of these uh, 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 economic parameters are lacking variables, uh, we also have to monitor market sentiments. And in uh, making our policy decisions, we take into account both uh, economic uh, variables and uh, sentiment, market sentiments, and try to uh, come up with policy which, in the core, is the duty of the central bank to strike the balance between growth and stability. Uh, stability in the areas, whether it be in the credit conditions, um, exchange rate volatility. Uh, certain exchange rate volatility is a crucial a variable that uh, we cannot uh, dismiss. Uh, too much volatility, we are aware, although I often mention that we are now adopting the flexible exchange rate uh, uh, regime, but uh, there are limits. Uh, we are not uh, uh, pure theorists. <laughs> uh, we do understand fully well that uh, too much uh, exchange rate volatility can create disincentive for timely investment. And as I mentioned in a number of occasions that the country do need uh, productive investment to increase our competitiveness. Now, if we let the exchange rate volatility to go too excessive, that can disincentivize timely uh, investment, which we don't like. So that's why sometimes we have to do our job to contain, uh, but not to the extent of trying to go against the, the, the reality in, in the market. And also, it's also very important to keep our stakeholders fully aware that there is risk in the exchange market. Uh, times when they feel that the risk is small or there is no risk, that comes the danger, <laughs> as we experienced in the past. So every time when we say uh, exchange rate can move two ways, it's not just something that we say for fun. We underlying, we want to warn that there, there, there is risk. Now, another aspect that uh, you often hear Central Bank, Bank of Thailand at the moment uh, uh, articulate uh, quite frequently is the level of household debts that has been increasing uh, quite fast lately for the past two years. Um, it also has bearing on the uh, consumption of the economy. Uh, too much or too high of leverage can sometimes hinder consumption. And we also have the uh, uh, feeling and the uh, uh, assessment, in fact our assessment also uh, reconfirmed that at the moment when we are seeing significant slowdown in the domestic consumption. That also has something to do with the payback of the debt created by households. Um, on the credit condition, all in all, I can say that uh, our current assessment, we are quite satisfied with the uh, credit standard in our uh, at least banking system. Uh, we think that uh, over time, there has been improvement in the uh, number of stakeholders involved. The overall credit system here has been prudent, has been vigilant. And this I can confirm after conversation with a number of uh, CEOs of our Thai banks uh, here. And also, I can also say that uh, it's also quite uh, uh, forward looking. Thank you, sir. Um, let me switch gears and um, come back to your point about up, out, and in, um, in the longer term picture. Uh, how do you think the Thai financial system <clears throat> would be able to, f uh, uh, to support Thailand's um, up, out, and in uh, that you mentioned? 
Uh, if we talk about banking system, I think as we go into the next phase of uh, 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 deeper integration in the region, I think the uh, Thai banking system is well placed. I think it's well placed in to compete. Um, I think uh, you know after '97, although we spent quite intensively the first five years trying to correct. Uh, what has been wrong in the system, but, but after that, over a decade now, I, it's my notice that uh, the Thai banking system has improved uh, quite significantly, even to the extent that nowadays they can boast the, uh, the, uh, the sound operating system, I can say, uh, very strong uh, capital base, uh, very comfortable liquidity positions, and even to claim uh, uh, more prudent risk uh, management. Um, but talking about integration, we also talk about opportunities. We also want our private sector, our Thai banking system to be able to benefit from this integration, whether it comes in the dimension of uh, market connectivity whether it comes in terms of uh, higher level of innovation, whether it comes in the requirement of uh, better efficiency. Uh, when we talk about connectivity, certainly we wish that our Thai banking system can enjoy the scale and scope of their business uh, so that they can, they can take advantage of these opportunities. Now, this you can do in uh, different forms. We have no fixed model that we are going to impose on them. We understand fully well. Particularly, I had some experience running commercial banks that it would be, it would not be uh, always desirable to push every one of them to expand their physical presence because it's very expensive. When banks trying to go overseas, particularly to set up branches and so on, uh, research after research, particular one by, say, if I can mention him, Oliver Byman also uh, point out very clearly that in the beginning, the return on equity will, will come down significantly. And we are not uh, among uh, banks that have plentiful of capital, just a scarce resource. So we, we give uh, flexibility to, to them, and then they, they find them out, proper models to fit them. Some of the Thai banks decide that rather than going uh, to go on with the uh, physical presence, they, they, they go into partnership with strategic partners in some of the member countries in the region. Uh, well, some who have continued for a long time with physical presence, they expand their branches, fine. We, we give, flexible, uh, 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 give them flexibility to enjoy the scale and, and, and scope. Now, innovation is going to be quite important uh, dimension. I, I hope and I think uh, they are aware that uh, this is going to be one key dimension, innovation, as customers uh, also uh, enjoy uh, convenient means of uh, banking services, whether it comes with uh, mobile uh, instruments by internet and so on, or even the development of the social media. So um, we, we hope that they, they are aware, they invest, they prepare themselves, and in comparison, uh, you will see that some of uh, our neighboring countries don't have to invest in the old infrastructure of the internet uh, or the landlines. They can leapfrog to the, uh, the Wi-Fi era and so on. So we, we hope and that the, our Thai banking system are aware uh, of this. Then the next is the efficiency. This is going to be key when you integrate, you open up uh, this kind of uh, territory. Those who will lead those who will be the leader will be the one with least cost uh, ability, with the availability of product and quality of products. Now, can you achieve that? You availability of the whole spectrum of products with good quality, least cost. Can you do that? Now, on the part of Bangal Thailand, um, over these years, as I mentioned, after the first phase of correcting. Uh, the wrongs after 97. We introduced this so-called financial master plan, phase one and phase two. And the gist of this uh, 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 plan one and plan two. Plan one is trying to consolidate 
consolidated system. You will notice that now we don't have the second tier bank uh, in the system. Uh, each member of the banking system is much uh, stronger than in the past. Um, uh, phase two is opening up. After phase one, opening up more, more liberal, introducing more players, increase the level of competitiveness, and so on. This is, we are going to the somewhat the latter part of phase two. Uh, phase three, we anticipate that we will uh, go on with this uh, opening up. Um, this to enable our banks to, to get stronger, uh, capture more opportunity. And underlying all this, we also pay attention to the more prudent regulations. And at the moment, we are implementing the so-called framework of Basel III to uh, ensure that all the regulations and conduct and so on uh, are, are prudent. Thank you very much, sir. Let me um, switch gears again to um, longer term key issues for Thailand. Um, you, you implied that we need to develop supply side strategies for longer term growth. And obviously, the government has already undertaken transport infrastructure uh, investment priorities. Uh, could you elaborate on what the Bank of Thailand consider as other important uh, long term growth strategies for Thailand? Well, certainly uh, more details were given in our annual symposium uh, 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 sometime in the third week of uh, next month. Uh, but in, in summary, uh, uh, in addition to the so-called uh, the three-move strategy that I mentioned in my speech, move up the value chain, uh, move out of your comfort zone, move in inviting uh, technology, inviting in uh, 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 people who, who can uh, benefits, uh, uh, give benefits to, to the economy. Uh, there are other aspects, uh, important ones, like the institutional setup. Certainly, uh, uh, we, we want to have good and proper institutions set up, whether it be in the area of good governance, democratic principle, uh, the quality and level of public participation, uh, legal and law enforcement, uh, income equality, social equality. These are some very uh, fundamental property of uh, uh, a good uh, system. In addition, uh, since uh, there are so many people in the capital market uh, uh, participate in this event, the, the admirable uh, recent uh, campaign, uh, the anti-corruption campaign by, uh, headed by people in the capital market is also something very very uh, uh, admirable. The, this institutional setup is, is, is important. Now, uh, you pose this question to me. Uh, in fact, uh, central bank has enhanced the more demand-driven uh, uh, policy lever. We, in fact, uh, have uh, little influence on the supply side. The supply side tend to be things deal with competitiveness, productivity, and so on. But in practice, the uh, Bank of Thailand also held regular consultation with many other governmental agencies uh, in sometimes formulation of macroeconomic policy, budgetary appropriation, and so on. Uh, whenever possible, we exchange our opinions, our ideas, uh, look ahead what will be important for the country. Now, having, having said that, uh, uh, not to uh, uh, say that Bank of Thailand has nothing to do with supply side economy, although uh, our instruments tend to be on the demand side. But monetary policy is a backdrop, a very important backdrop, by keeping the short term uh, stability in the market, keeping inflation contained, cost of capital reasonable, not too high. That's also very important so that it will be very supportive for the, the supply side. Uh, so, uh, although we are more on the demand side, we try to keep stability to support the supply side enhancement. Uh, thank you, sir. And um, for everyone, I think our time is a bit pressing. So, uh, with that, uh, may I ask all of you to uh, join me in thanking the Governor Prasan again. Thank you, sir, very much.
Thank you very much for an insightful session from our Bank of Thailand governor and also Dr. Wutsai Shi from Patulat Securities, who is one of the best economists in Thailand.